want you to see. How many of you here in the audience ever heard the phrase magic square? Did you? That's all? Okay. Let me explain it to you. What a magic square is, first of all, the square. Let's, whoops, let's talk about the square first. You can make a, a, a three by three would be a nine square, five by five would be a 25 square. I've got just about enough room to make a four by four, which is obviously a 16 square. Okay, so this is the word square and that, whoops, and that, this is great chalk, in that two word phrase. I'm writing with my fingernails. Okay, that's the square. Now the word magic in that phrase, let me explain it to you. What the mathematical genius, and I'm putting that in quotes, would do is he would ask the, somebody in the audience to call any number, and then, after about a minute or two of thinking, he would put a number on each one of these squares. The point being that when he was through, every row from left to right would total the number called, and then every column up down would total the number called, and then the two diagonals, there are always two diagonals at a square, would total the number called. That's it, that's why it was called magic. I would like to try that, but I wanna try it a little differently. See, I told you before that the mathematical genius in quotes would have to think for a minute or two before he filled in the numbers. I have been practicing for years, give or take a day or two, to see if I can't do it without thinking without thinking. That's what I want to try. But now, if I pointed to somebody and said, okay, you give me a number, that wouldn't look too good. It looked like it's a setup. Let's do it so this way. Somebody, anybody, usually a man could do this faster. Pull out a dollar bill. The first dollar bill I see, I'm going to ask you to throw it. Whoever catches it will give me a number. Whoever, I can't control this, so I haven't seen, I see one here. Sir, crumple it up. Mr. Sapistein, is it crumpling up? In a moment, I'm going to ask you to throw it either behind you to the left, right, I don't care. Now listen, whoever ends up with the bill, in his hand or her hand is the one that will give me the number. The reason I stress that, I can't control that. Somebody may go for it and hit it and it'll bounce like a baseball and somebody else will pick it up. So there's no way I can control it. And the reason I'm using a dollar bill is because it's light. There's no way you can control it. So whenever you're ready, toss it. I've lost it. Where is it? Some, all right, okay. This young lady, I know. So let's throw it to somebody I've done. Yeah, where did it? Somebody, who's got it? Okay, that gentleman, I don't know. I would rather know that young lady, honestly. But you ended up with it, Mr. Goldberg, incidentally, just so that I don't get sued or in any argument, that dollar bill belongs to Mr. Sapistein. He's sitting right here. I am now off the hook. I'm off the hook. Mr. Goldberg, here's what I'd like you to do for me. Don't worry about the bill. Listen to me. I would like you to think of a number, think of it, don't say it out loud, between 34 and 100. Now, let me tell you why I'm giving you those guidelines. You cannot, with a 16 square, do a magic square with less than 34. Well, you can. I want to be truthful, but you'd have to use fractions, and I don't want to get into fractions because then to test me would be a drag. You'd need a calculator, okay? So let's keep it above 34, and I think up to 100 is long enough. Otherwise, I won't have room in the squares for the numbers. So let your mind go up and down that ladder, Mr. Goldberg, ser seriously, between 34 and 100. Finally settle on one number. Make it a high one, make it tough, any way you like, but get it clearly in mind. The reason I want you to get it clearly in mind is when I tell you to, I want you to shout it out loud and clear. And what I want to do, and this is the whole point, I want to start writing on this blackboard the instant you call that number, to make it dramatic, I want to start writing before the echo of your voice dies down. That quickly, okay? And the only way I can do that is if you shout it out loud and clear, because if I don't hear it, I'm gonna to have to ask you to repeat it, then it looks like I'm thinking. Then you'd have to take another number, do you understand? So mentally, practice shouting it out loud, clearly and distinctly, but not yet. Wait, I, I gotta kind of build myself up for this. I'm kind of sorry I started it, to tell you the truth. <laughs> You got that number in your mind? Yes. On the count of three, Mr. Goldberg, on the count of three, shout it out loud and clear. <clears throat> and I want to start writing before the echo of your voice dies down. You people, you're the judges, you watch. You ready? One, two, three. 39. Ah. I would have written it twice as fast if we had some <laughs> decent chalk. But I did start writing instantly, didn't I? And okay. Um, Okay, I tried to do it as quickly as I could. I tried to do a few things. I tried not to repeat any numbers. If you see any repeats, please let me know and I'll change it, okay? Um, 
I also want to put down the number that Mr. Goldberg called because your memories are not as good as mine. So you'll remember the number. Okay, I told you I tried to do uh, no repeats. I think that's, uh, that's what I'm checking. Okay, you remember what I told you about a magic square? I told you that the four left-right rows would have to total 79. Let's take one of them, then you can check the rest on your time. Look, 8 and 11 are 19, add the one, that's easy, is 20, add the 20 to 59, that gives you 79, okay? You can check the others, but let's take one column, up, down, I told you all the columns should total to the number that was called. Look, 61 and five is 66 and two is 68 and 11 is obviously 79. You can check the others. I told you that there were two diagonals in every magic square. Let's take one, look, eight and two is 10, this is easy. Add it to the 60 is 70, to the nine is 79. You can check the other diagonal. Now that's as far as most magic squares go, but I'm an extremist. I'll tell you what I also try to do. I tried to make sure that the four corner numbers would add to 79. Add the 10 to the 60, to the one, to the eight. Not yet, no, not yet, really, let it build. All right, so that would give you 79. I also wanted the four numbers in each corner to total 79, like these four. Eight, 11, two, and 58 is 79. 59, one, 12, and seven, that's 79. These four right here, 79. These four right here, 664. Wait, no, no, not yet. I love you for it, but hold it. I get so excited, I gotta finish this thing. Okay, and let's not forget the four center ones, 279 and 61 will total 79. But look, if you take these two diagonals, the 58 and the 11, and add them to their mirror image down here, six and four is 10, add it to 58 and 68 and 11, that's 79. Take these two diagonals right here and add them to these two, that'll give you 79. Take these two on top, add them to the mirror image here, that'll give you 79. Take these two on the side and add them to these two. That'll give you 79. Look, in every square of 16, there are four squares of nine. Let me make, the, make it heavier so you'll see what I'm talking about. You see the square of nine here, three by three? Well, if you add the four corner digits of that, eight, 59, nine, and three, that'll give you 79. Here's another one right here. Add those, that'll give you 79. Add this one right over here, that'll give you 79, and finally, the lower right quadrant, you should pardon the expression, add the two, the 12, the 60, the five, that will give you 79. In other words, any possible direction you can go on at square will give you 79. Right.